The non-metallic elements range from highly reactive to non-reactive. And the way they behave in chemical reactions gives us the clues we need to group them together. Let's test for reactivity with four non-metals. Argon. Neon. Chlorine. And iodine. All right. How do we test them? Well, since nonmetals react easily with metals, let's expose each sample to steel wool that's been heated. And if there's a reaction? Let's we'll see the steel wool burn. This flask is filled with chlorine gas. It's kind of greenish yellow. Isn't chlorine gas really toxic? Very toxic. Let's see how it reacts with the steel wool. Okay, now that's a reaction. It looks like the steel wool is burning. You're right. Metals can burn in any react gas. It doesn't have to be oxygen. We have argon gas in this flask. It's totally clear. No color at all. But is it reactive? Well, let's find out. Uh, I can't see anything. There should be flames. It looks like argon doesn't react at all. You're right. It doesn't. This is neon gas. Neon, like in neon signs? Same gas. This doesn't have any color. Neon only glows when high voltage electricity is forced through it. Okay, let's see if it reacts. Sure. We put in the steel wool. And? And nothing. It looks like neon doesn't react. Good observation. <laughs> So we're testing iodine and steel wool. But they're both solids. The different atoms can't really collide with each other. So they can't react, right? Good point. We'll have to add some heat to vaporize the iodine crystals. Wow, that didn't take very long. Well, look at the color. Let's try for a reaction. All right. It's burning. So iodine is a reactive element. Good job. From what you've seen, do you think we can group any of these elements together? Sure. Argon and neon didn't react at all. That tells us a lot. And they're both colorless, so I put them in their own group. Fine. What about chlorine and iodine? Well, they both had pretty bright colors as gases. And they both reacted with steel wool. You could see it burn. So I guess that's enough evidence to put them in the same group. Sure. And we could do other experiments that would confirm that. That's the scientific method. Hydrogen and oxygen brought together in the right combination produces water. And water, of course, at least here on the Earth, is one of the most important compounds for the formation and maintenance of life. After that, carbon has got to be the single most important element for life on Earth. Carbon has the ability to make the most enormous number of complex molecules, from simple molecules like sugar all the way up, D 
DNA, the blueprint of life. After that, there's sulfur, there's phosphorus, the calcium in our bones, the iron in our blood, all came from the insides of stars billions of years ago.